Today we're going to be learning about arithmetic and assignment operators and a bit from both the math and the algorithm class. So let's uh, get started. So operators. So I'm going to show you one assignment operator first because we actually, uh, oh, oh dear. Because we actually already know that operator uh, firsthand because we've used it. And the first assignment operator is the equals sign. So if we go back down here, let's uh, create a variable, let's call it, I don't know, my variable. And let's set it equal to, uh, I don't know, let's, let's go 1337 for no adequately explored reason. And let's print that. So total, and let's set that equal to my variable. Something like that. So uh, I guess I didn't spell that right. In case you didn't spell it right, the best thing you could do is just copy and paste. Nah, nah. Not in a big program. You should make sure you actually spell it correctly instead of just copying and pasting. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, since this is small, I already know I spelled it correctly up there. So total is 1337. Well, that's because we use this assignment operator to say that this variable on the left is equal to the number on the right. So that's pretty cool. And you know what? There's one thing that I forgot to mention in the last tutorial. And that's uh, what an unsigned means. Uh, so what is an unsigned int? Or what's an unsigned double? So let me actually go through that really, really quickly. So basically, what uh, when you have a variable, if it's int or double, let's just work with int. So int, I believe, takes up four bytes of space, of memory on your computer. And three... So three of the four are used for numbers, and the other one is used for determining positive or negative. So when you have three bytes here, it can only hold a certain range of numbers. I don't know what it is, but let's say it's 0 through 32,000, something like that. Well, the fourth byte, the last one, or I actually think it's the first one, uh, determining whether it's positive or negative will then double that range. So instead of just it being 0 to, let's say, 32,000, it can go from negative 32,000 to positive 32,000. However, an unsigned, uh, an unsigned int of that, since, it, since it's unsigned, or an unsigned double, which I actually think doubles are 8 bytes. Uh, what unsigns do is it tells us that for sure it will always be positive. So we never have to worry about signs. That means all four bytes can be used for numbers. So instead of it only going from 0 to 32,000, it can go from 0 to... 50,000 or something like that. It has more space, so it doesn't have to worry about the positive or negative. All four bytes can be used for determining what kind of number. Uh, so that's what unsigned is. Will we be using unsigns? Yes. The first time we'll use an unsigned integer is with vectors, which is like, it's not too far. It's like tutorial 12 or 13 or 14. I don't know. Something way down there, but we will use unsigns, and I'll bring that up again. Okay, so back to this. So we have assignment operator, so that's our first plus. And let's go through a bunch of arithmetic. And basically, it's the obvious. We have plus, minus, multiplication uses the asterisk, and division uses the forward slash. And there will be one more that I use. So let's make an int x. Let's go int x is, I don't know, equal to 7. And let's go int y is equal to 2. And let's do some math here. So we could just make another variable called total and make that equal to x plus y. And you don't need the parentheses. The parentheses just make me feel more comfortable. Uh, and then we could just put total here, but I don't really like that. Let's Because the more variables that you create, unless you need to use the total, I try to avoid this because it... The, uh, creating more variables requires more memory, which means your file size will end up being larger. Now, of course, that doesn't really matter now because our file size is small anyways, because we're not going to be doing much in these tutorials, but still, try to avoid that because that's bad programming habits. So we can just throw out the x plus y right here. So let's see what we have. 
And we have 9, so 7 plus 2 worked. So let's try uh, minus. You know what? Let's go y minus x. So let's run this again. And there we go. We get negative 5, and that's why I did that. Because there will be 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So you can see we have negative numbers. Uh, we don't have to switch them back because multiplication is commutative. So 7 times 2 is 14. And what else should we be doing? We should probably do division. And let's uh, throw them uh, back. So x and y. Click save all. Run it again. And we get 3, of course. Integer division, my immortal enemy. Yes. This guy, just like declaring a, or initializing an integer as a decimal, you only get the front number. So 7 divided by 2 should be 3.5. So again, even with integer division, the 3.5 did not round up to 4. It just gave us the 3. So bear that in mind. It can be very dangerous. Now, if you just had one of these as a double, and then you ran it, now we have problem solved. Now it's a double. Now, if you actually do this, if you have a double, any time you create a double, it's very wise to add in the point zero. It's not necessary, but it's, uh, it makes it very more obvious to the, both you, the programmer, and the, your computer itself in determining whether or not it's an integer or a decimal. So I like to do that because it makes it more clear. But what if they have to be integers? But only in one case do you want them to come out as a, in a decimal format. Well, you can use what's called static cast. So this is basically data type conversion. And I'll most very much likely have a tutorial on data type conversion. In fact, will I? Oh, I don't have a data type conversion tutorial listed, so I gotta, I have to fix that because I'm gonna have to. I should be doing one. And you, in order to do this, we'll be using static cast. So how do we use static cast? Well, this is the format. Type out static underscore cast, followed by your hairpins with the data type you would like to convert whatever is within the parentheses so most likely a variable and you can actually put an expression here so I could just type in like this static cast and then you know change it into a double and our x divided by y is already in the parentheses so let's see if that works three what but I convert it to a double Wait, why isn't this working? Well, the reason why this isn't working is because before it converts what's within these parentheses into a double, it's already doing the division. So whatever the result of the division is, which is the 3, it's then converting it into a double, which is a problem. So a way to solve this is just convert this x, for an example, into a double, and then divide it by y. So we can put another set of parentheses around this whole thing. There we go. So now we'll only convert x into a double and then divide it with y. But x isn't permanently converted into a double. It's only converted to, into a double for this one expression. So bear that in mind. So I run it again and now we get 3.5. So that's how you can go about that using the static cast then the data type you want to convert it to and whatever you want to convert. So that's really really cool. Now the last one I want to show you is the mod or modulus and that's the percent sign and what this does is it returns the remainder so if I type something into X such as I don't know 3658 and for Y I make it a thousand uh, let's see what gets returned with uh, this being X let's make the X mod Y so let's actually analyze this first so what's going on is it's gonna see how many times Y fits into X so why is a thousand? How many thousands fit into three thousand six hundred and fifty-eight? Well, only three. So we should get the remainder six fifty-eight. So let's run this. And we do. So there it is. So that's a very easy example. So allow me to show you a, a more realistic one. So I'll throw in I don't know seventeen, and down here I'll put in three. I click save, and then I'll run this. I should get two, right? Okay, so I did get two. So let me show you how we got to two. So 
basically it sees how many times Y fits in the X again, so how many threes can fit in there. Or not how many threes, just, you know, see where it ends. So you have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, but then it can't get to eighteen, because seventeen is less than eighteen. So it can only stop at fifteen. So what's remaining remaining after that fifteen to get to seventeen? Only two, right? So if I make this sixteen, or you know what, let's make it let's make it thirteen. That should come out as one. And it does. So you go three, six, nine, twelve, and that's as high as it can get. So how many how much is remaining after that twelve? Well only one more. So that's how the modulus works out. So it's very convenient for uh for certain occasions, which I'll probably be using in a project video. Uh, which I'll probably do like conversion of integers into Roman numerals or something like that. That's probably an example of when I'll use it. Okay, so what's some assignment operators? Well, before I show you some more assignment operators, uh, let me uh, show you something else. So how can you re... So let me delete this. How can we retain the value of a certain variable and, I don't know, add something to it? So what you might be thinking about doing is, can't we just set x equal to itself and then add 5 to it like this? Well, let's see what happens. So I'll... Uh, and there we go, we got 18. So it said x will now be equal to whatever x was, 13, and then add 5 to it. So you get 18. Now, should we be doing it this way? No, this is very amateurish, and you should never do it this way. Another way you could go about doing it is using various assignment operators. You could put down plus equals, minus equals, times equals, divide equals, and of course, mod equals. So we could just type out, instead of uh, all this, all we have to do is type out x plus equals, uh, let's go 6 this time. And basically what the plus equals assignment operator means is to increment the variable on this side by this much. That's all, just increment. So if we run this, we should get 19 this time. So we get 19. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And of course, decrementing is, you know, minus equals. And all of these work. I won't show you all of them because you understand. So 13 minus equals 6. So basically 13 minus 6 equals 7. So uh, all these, all those right there work. Now there's two more arithmetic operators I'd like to show you. And that's uh, a shorthand if you like to increment or decrement by only one. So we could use minus equals one or plus equals one, but we also have the plus plus and the minus minus. And all the plus plus does is increment by one and the minus minus decrements by one. So instead of putting, so I will show you this first. So we should get 14, and we do. We could also just type in plus, whoops, plus plus. So I click save, and then I'll run this, and we still get 14. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And we also have minus minus, so I'll show you that. And I'll save, and you get uh, 12, so it decremented. Now the one last thing I would like to show you really quickly is the difference between putting plus plus in the front uh, or minus minus in the front and putting it in the back as you can also put it in the whoops in the back like this. So if I uh if I just cut this let me type out x right here so I'll throw an x uh plus plus behind. I'll click save. I run this. Still comes out to 14. But what happens if I put the plus plus in the front? I click save and I run it. I only get 13. Notice how it stayed at 13, but I put the x plus plus there, but it's still at 13. Well, the reason for this is uh, because it's reading it kind of like a human being would across. So when it hit the x, it didn't hit the plus plus yet. So it didn't increment it up by one. And sometimes this can be useful. Um, so notice that if I go down here and I throw out C out, uh, you know, X again and line and then run this. Notice how it's 14 down there. See how it's 13, but it doesn't actually appear as 14 till we bring it down there. So I just want to show you the plus plus still works. 
Um, but that's the difference. If you put it in the plus plus in the um, in the front, if you're already printing it or already doing math to it, instead of just having it by itself like this, um, then those changes will not be in effect yet. But if you want them to be in effect right away, um, put it put them out like that. So uh, that's why I wanted to show you for this tutorial. So I hope hope it was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.